Watching television in the rig has its own set of challenges. It seems many times we have to actually end up watching TV on my computer because of some of the software that's on there and because of some of the programming. I would say at least 50% of the time we're sitting in our recliners watching that TV. But yesterday was very unusual because we were excited and we were setting up to watch for the RVers which was on the Discovery Channel and the only way we could get it was going on Sue's laptop and lo and behold we also discovered that our favorite show Blacklist was brand new and we could only get it on the laptop so now what happened yesterday was what happens many days where Sue is here relaxing watching TV with me all snug as a bug but would you like to explain what happened yesterday honey just like it usually happens and if you hold on I will turn the microphone around So a lot of times at night we're sitting here holding hands of course watching oh, our watching our that's show so sweet. and the shades are all down and when we're in here it's like this is our home doesn't matter where we're at so we've been through Kentucky and Tennessee we're on our way here and it still feels like home but every time we open the shades it's like we have a new backyard so where are we now Mark Let's see where we are What the heck? It's like 007 lives here with all these electric shades. Honey, we're in a parking lot. I thought it was night. I thought we were watching TV. Oh, wait. That was last night. Let's Welcome. go out and discover where we are. Let's go figure it out. Welcome to our world. Where are you going, Mark? Oh! I'm so proud of myself for being on time. I got mixed up for a second. Uh, <laughs> oh God. We're actually at the Freightliner Custom Chassis Gaffney, South Carolina location. Anybody that's got a motor coach for any amount of time learns pretty quick that the holy grail, the mothership of getting your Freightliner chassis repaired, maintained, fixed, is the Gaffney Service Center. They have the cream of the crop, the best of the best. Uh, you know, for the most part, 99% of the customers just leave here just glowing and vibrating with uh, exuberance on the uh, experience they had. You can see where we're parked today. We're in spot number nine. You see that there's no water, no sewer, but there's electric. And actually, there's a number of reasons for that. A, they don't want you to turn this into a campground. This is just supposed to be a perk or an assist for you to deal with the trauma of having your home in here. And the other nice thing is that, you know, you got to remember at the crack of dawn, like 7.30, you got to have this thing packed up, ready to go, because it's got to go inside. Let's go over here, and you can see on this side, we have uh, four, five, and six. So there's three stalls on this side, three on the other side. Uh, so they can only work on six rigs at a time. If you went in there, it's just like a gas station where uh, I don't know if all of the stations, but a lot of them can literally take your rig as big as it is. You know, turn around and look at this Essex here next to us. Imagine that thing going on a lift mechanism and going up in the air and a guy's working on it just like you get your car worked on in a gas station. So... Uh, that's one of the unique things about this place because it's one thing to fix something when you're laying on your back. You can only do so good. But when you can really get in there and work on it in a comfortable position, 
for a technician. Well, that looks comfortable, honey. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and, <laughs> and I can say that with clear conscience because one of the things that uh, Sue and I did is we attended the Camp Freightliner class one and it was a his and her class and it was a wonderful experience to do that with your partner to both learn about the rig and all of the jargon and you know all of the acronyms and how everything looks and feels but to attend Camp Freightliner 2 you have to attend Camp Freightliner 1 first and and because we did that together I was able to go to Camp Freightliner 2 and that was a class where it was just me and my technician, who, by the way, had all the knowledge and did all the work, but it was him and me. My rig was up in the air, and for eight freaking hours, that guy worked on all sorts of stuff, and I could just blurt something out. Hey, you know, what about this? Boom, he'd be right over there looking at it, giving me his opinion, and I'm, I'm not making this up. This guy fixed stuff before I could even say to him, how much, or I would pay, I'd pay for that, or do you think I need to do it? He'd literally fix it, didn't charge me, didn't blink an eyebrow. I mean, it was unbelievable. Um, you have to commit to like, I think six hours worth of work, and I don't know what their labor rate is. Let's call it $150 an hour, might not be that much. So, you know, six, $700, uh, minimum is what it costs to take this class but I'm telling you when you're working with that guy and you can just one after another go through the underside of your coach with a fine tooth comb and bring it back up to speed it's invaluable one of the things on our cost video and one of the comments that we get a lot was people can't believe how much I've spent maintaining this and I, I had to take a step back from that and think to myself okay why has that happened? And I actually had some um, of our viewers explain it to me so that I can now explain it to you. And one of the big costs was that I had to re-zero my maintenance. Uh, we bought the rig with 23,000 miles on it and technically uh, that should have been right around the time that the person I bought it from had all the maintenance done. But I didn't have really good records on what was done so I'd be guessing at it so lo and behold I thought miles he was worth it and I literally kind of started the clock over so there is a lot of duplicate maintenance I did on this so that when you if you are ordering our cost sheets which are for free we're just trying to help you to educate you on how expensive it is for us tourists not campers uh, where we just drive around in this thing and visit different places and cities, you can probably take maybe the first year maintenance out. You could probably take about 2000 bucks out of the first year that we were rolling around. So I was walking around the parking lot, not anywhere near anybody. And I found this. What is that? It's a little rubber cap that now will be a backup for covering the air ports on our air brake system on our Honda. When you disconnect the air brake hose, you have this coupling that's open to the elements. Uh -huh. Used to be able to make that sound better. <laughs> you need a drink of water. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with my dentures. <laughs> I can't get it to work anymore. You don't wear dentures. Mm. You missed your smack. There it is. You nope, that it. ain't it. I lost it. So one of the things at uh, Freightliner Custom Chassis here, they like to challenge you. So on the left side of my rig is where my bays are. And you got a fence post on this side and a big giant post on that side. And I gotta fit through here with the rig. So I don't have a lot of room. Plus I gotta open my bay door. But <laughs> if you're gonna dump, there's the opening for the dump. 
And here's fresh water. It's actually potable. So we're probably not going to do that. We're able to go about six, seven days if we really work at it. And uh, we've got another stop after this to get tires. And we're going to try to make it stretch so we don't have to do this. Because actually we're going to try to leave at about five or six in the morning from where we are through here and go to a tire store so we're in the parking lot of the tire store in the neighborhood of seven o'clock so that all of the customers aren't there yet so that we've got somewhere to park that's the plan we'll see how it works so then the life of an RVer is the doors open at 745 and trust me if you're there at 746 you're a minute too late. You have to be there with all your paperwork, what you're gonna have done, and they will assign a mechanic to your rig, and they will be out to your rig, driving it out, and stuffing it in one of these bays, lickety split. Uh, this place is very efficient. And when you go through these doors over here, inside is a lounge. Ooh, nice rocking chairs too. Well, so a lot of people like us pull vehicles, so they may choose to go in there and go to the uh, fantastic custom Freightliner factory tour uh, or some of the different things in town here. We would love to do that again, even though we've done it a number of times already. But my advice to you guys as a pro tip uh, is when you get your rig worked on, I don't care if it's the most fantastic place like this place is or a place that you know nothing about, you kind of never want to leave. Because if they have decisions to make that would require any amount of uh, executive decision level privilege or if there's any money that the company would be spending out of your pocket and you haven't given them permission, they'll always uh, decide in the favor of not doing that. And that's not how you want to be when you're on the road. You want to be proactive, anything that's marginal, you want to get it fixed when you're in a facility like this, rather than being in a Kmart somewhere in the middle of nowhere where the next Freightliner dealership is 300 miles away, because it could be a 300 mile tow job. So our plan tomorrow and the next day is to waste the whole day, if you want to call it that, in this room here, uh, working on our laptops or doing whatever or laying around, but uh, we're not leaving the area. Now, maybe Mark, what are you doing? Well, I'm cleaning up. You don't have a pet. Oh, oh. Here's Miles on its way for its maintenance. So we've got uh, transmission fluid, engine oil, filters, generator service, all sorts of things being done. kind of funny two years ago I was here this place is the only place that gave me excellent service when it came to having the coach taken care of and it was this exact stall so we're in at Freightliner in Gaffney South Carolina and yesterday we were actually inside um, getting a lot of work done but uh, their computer was down so it was later, we weren't gonna take off anyways, but the computer is down, so now it's the next day and we are getting ready to go make a payment. Then we'll take off this afternoon. All right, Sue, let's go check out what the bad news is. So I'm thinking that a normal run-of-the-mill uh, maintenance, grease oil, filter, fool around, all that kind of stuff, Maybe it's been about 800 bucks in the past. Uh, I kind of got a more super duper version of it this time. So I'm thinking it's gonna be uh, maybe 1200 for that. But then I had a $500 adder. I had belts put on and I had my uh, power steering fluid leak uh, fixed. And I'm really thankful that they were able to fit that on. That added 500 bucks all of a sudden. And then there was my generator service. So I'm gonna consider myself lucky if I'm 
1500 bucks or under. I'm thinking it's, I'm guessing it's 17. I'll be shocked if it's 2000. So if I, if I start crying when I'm at the desk peeing, I cut the camera off, Sue, okay? Come on. Got it. Grown man, you know? Got it, no problem. Man. All right. Preparing yourself in case you have to cry? Yeah, I was clearing my throat. Well, here I am, the moment of truth. And actually, it wasn't that bad. We'll talk about it in a second. What you'll see here next is the lounge. And it's very comfortable. There's a number of leather couches, recliners. They have magazines you can grab. The TV is usually on. But in the distance is a table that Sue and I captured early on because we had a lot of editing to do. And there was actually two crossword puzzles on there. We're hoping that the person that started that crossword puzzle wasn't there a little late the day we got there because we just kind of plopped down around it. And after a while, at least one of the puzzles looked like it was done. So we put it in a box and the other one we tried to keep in one piece. Over on the side here is kind of a nice kitchen with a microwave and different areas. We packed our lunch actually every day and would bring it along. And it was kind of funny because every time we would pull it out, the people that were in the lounge here would go, oh my God, what a great idea. So we kind of felt like geniuses. They in fact had to use this for all of their meals, which wasn't exactly health food. So I pretty much concentrated just to the left here and would hit this coffee bar pretty hard. So did Sue. And before you knew it, the day was done. What are you cleaning things up? Are you looking I don't know. for I my... noticed that because I stretched this morning, I actually could <laughs> bend without going, I ain't doing that bending. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the Freightliner Gaffney custom chassis repair facility and this is living proof that they recommend the diesel clean diesel fuel supplement the white is for cold weather and the silver is for all the other weather so there's living proof and here are the mm. fire extinguishers how many of those do you have I only have five of them <laughs> so I ran out of cupboard space <laughs> All right. Are you crying? Well, it was bad enough. I think I need to sit down. Oh, no. Oh. So it was with tax $2,273.53. Oh, no. Um, Maybe I need to sit down too. Yeah. Uh, basically, the labor for the service was seven hundred fifty dollars, and it was uh, gear oil change to my um, drive pumpkin, the uh, engine oil. I had the oil changed in the uh, fan the side radiator fan gearbox, fuel filter, oil filters, fuel oil separator. I had to, I replaced my giant $100 air cleaner every year, even though they say every two years. Uh, air dryer kit, I have the transmission fluid replaced pretty much every year. You know, for the couple two, three hundred bucks it cost me to change the fluid, I feel a lot better when I'm chugging up a mountain when I know my transmission likes me personally for, uh, you know, changing the oil all the time. I had the air conditioning system tuned up. They uh, put some Freon in. I had the computer checked because it's throwing some codes, which, by the way, we have to go to Cummins now to have a knock sensor put in and I was doing some YouTubing last night seeing what it's going to cost and it looks like that's going to be a thousand bucks. Uh, had the generator filtered and filter and oil. Had new belts put on which is amazing because on the engine I had uh, timing belts put on or serpentine belts. I had them put on two years ago 
and they didn't like how they looked here, so they put another set on. Then I had a hydraulic pump seal that was leaking on my power steering, had that fixed. But I did get a 5% discount because being a member of the Freightliner Custom Owners Chassis Group. Mm. Yep. Well, that adds up. Uh, minus $113 there, and my 16-pin connector, they checked and they said, okay, that's the little fun that I have when I'm driving down the freeway at 65 miles an hour and all of a sudden my dashboard goes completely empty. Oh, I, I do get a buzzer. And I got no gauges, no speed, no air pressure, no oil pressure, no nothing, you know. So what did they do? Just clean the pins again? They, they opened it up and they looked at them and they said, nothing wrong there. Okay, put it back together. Oh. So sometimes a connector like that, when you take it apart and you put it back together, it... Uh, it, it helps. It helps out a little bit. Yeah. So let's get out of here, Sue. All right. You're not going to cry, though? No. no. Grown man. I'll save that for something important, like if you eat all the chips, you know, and, and I was like really <laughs> crazy about them. Them. So in our cost video, we talked about how expensive it is to uh, keep a diesel pusher, for that matter, even probably a gasser. Uh, motor home where you have your engine like really hard to get at just stuffed in here uh, The people that really can decrease their cost if uh, someone is got uh, You know a husband or a partner that's able to do this maintenance himself They can save a ton of money for instance if we stop at the top here this long cylinder here actually is an air cleaner now I paid $96 for that here at Freightliner. I've seen these probably, uh, uh, you know, as cheap as maybe $75. You do have to be careful on the vintage of those because they kind of have a shelf life. If they get old, uh, the price will go down and then you'll buy it and then you might even make matters worse where you'll buy two of them and you'll store one because you got a good deal on it. But what happens is if this paper uh, degrades enough that it would shake loose a little piece that would go into your turbocharger which is spinning at 200,000 rpms you're gonna have a really bad problem so you want to make sure you get really fresh filters from a place that uses a lot of them that's why I get them here we're literally 10 miles away from the factory where this coach was made the, the undercarriage of it not the top of it so they go through tons of these filters. Plus I had to pay the labor to have all of this piping disconnected. Anybody that's uh, still in good shape could certainly replace that filter themselves. The other filters that we had done, don't hit your head on here, honey, is here's my uh, fuel filter that they replaced. And here's the uh, water separator for the fuel, I believe. If you're looking back here, you can see these belts here that they put on. I had those done about two years ago and lo and behold they didn't like how they looked and they suggested I replace them again so uh, fine I'll, I'll do whatever they say. Now this is a little tougher for Sue to look at but down where my flashlights are here right on this red plate somewhere behind there I had a leak and that was uh, my power steering pump must have a connection where it sticks a shaft through and picks up some power with and so there was a flange gasket and uh, they were able to replace that for me and I was real happy about that that they could fit that in okay. if you look way deep in here um, there's like a little square box that I'm shining the flashlight on well that's a gearbox that is a 90 degree bevel set that runs my fan because I have a side radiator. So you have to change the oil in that. So you can imagine how much fun it is digging in there and having to do that. Now in back of this engine is the transmission. So underneath there, I also had the transmission fluid replaced uh, along with the filters. Okay, well, somewhere on this pipe here, along the way I need a sensor replaced well, I sure as heck ain't gonna do it and it looks like that's gonna be a thousand bucks yeah, yeah. so we might be done RVing in a couple of weeks because we're gonna run out of money <laughs> I don't think so yeah. alright so. well let's 
shut the door and get this thing on the road. You can see our neighbors here. They're all fixed up. They're on the road. They had kind of a cool technique. They just pulled forward and they snuck their rig, or excuse me, their Honda in back here and they hooked up here and then they took off. So we might see if we can do the same technique. Our first sunset drive. Mm. Take a picture. Take a picture Something video. better got a video. Oh. Show what a commanding presence I have with all of these controls. You do have commanding presence. I have to pay attention. I had something come up here. Okay. Bobtail. Sorry. Bobtail. Bobtail. Ah. I thought I headed out to Bobtail. <laughs> Did, um, did Jerry teach you that? No, I actually I picked that up by reading the signs at Highland. Uh, oh my god, you're funny. The nice thing at night, I can read my speedometer. Oh yeah? yeah. Huh. Alright, we're driving at sunset. Something we said we would not do. Yeah, it must officially be dark because my Garmin just went to night mode. Uh, and we don't necessarily recommend this, especially for people like me that are old and crusty. And even though I don't need glasses for some strange reason at my age, that doesn't mean my night vision is that great. Uh, but we're going to a tire store and we had to make the decision if we were going to pull in early in the morning, we would have had to leave at dark at about 4.30 in the morning to get there before the whole parking lot is full of people and cars, or we time it at night here, and we got about 45, 50 minutes left, and you can see that we still got some daylight left, so we're thinking this was the best trade-off, uh, but we'll see how it works. We're hoping to get there so that we have enough maneuvering uh, room so that we can pull in and then back into the spot that the guy drew on a little diagram for us. We were going to get all these tires at National Indoor RV, but when I started quizzing the guy how they're going to do it, the guy was going to literally be driving back and forth to his tire store to uh, do the balancing, and that seemed a little bit crazy. Uh, National Indoor apparently doesn't have the tire changing equipment, didn't necessarily expect them to, but with, since we're having six new tires put on, plus the retro band, it just didn't seem logical. We're going to do the tires, and then we're going to Nashville. So this is the tail end of our trip to University Tire. We'll be there shortly. We'd like to invite you to watch our upcoming video that will show all of the work that was done putting the eight tires on. I actually had two of them switched around. We'll show the balancing and the installation of the retro bands that I had installed. The following week then we'll show our repair week at National Indoor RV. So you don't want to miss that. Here you can see something that we really don't do very often at all. Uh, we never pull into a place late at night. Uh, that would be really increasing the risk of backing into something, but we kind of had no choice at this place because I could tell from the satellite photos that there was just no room uh, to maneuver in this place. And I'm telling you, we're going to show in our next video how crowded this parking lot is during the day it borders on ridiculous. It's almost like they were giving free tires away. There were so many people showing up. So we'd like to thank you for watching. We welcome you to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next week.